family of God. And I do mean the genuinely born again believers of Jesus Christ that were drawn by the Spirit from the Father unto salvation to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. I say hello my family. Today I want to talk to you about something that can be kind of deep on a level but is really simple truth. And it comes from the book of Colossians. And I'm just going to read it to you and then we're going to talk about it, if that's alright. I'm going to start in verse 9, uh, chapter 1. For this cause we also, since the day that we heard of it, cease not to pray for you in the desire that ye might be fulfilled with knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord and please him in all things, being fruitful in all good works and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might through his glorious power unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness. Giving, unto, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, that is the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible God, the first begotten of every creature, for by him were all things created which are in heaven and which are in the earth, things visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And, th and through peace made by that blood of that his cross to reconcile to himself through him, through him I say all things, both which are in earth and which are in heaven. This is obviously talking about Christ. And it's saying all things were created by him and for him everything in heaven everything on this earth was all created by him and for his glory and his blood the shedding of his blood was the was the the remission and the forgiveness of sin through his through the through the cross of calvary but 18 says and he is the head of the body of the church he is the beginning and the first begotten of the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Wow. Christ is the head of the body of the church. That's not talking about church that you go to on Sunday morning. This is talking about the body of genuinely born-again believers. This is talking about the family of God. The family of God is the body. And Christ is its head. And he is the head of the body, the head of the church. There is no other because all things were created by him and for him. Christ is the head of the church. Your pastor is not the head of the church. Certainly the priest or the pope is not the representative of Christ. It's not the head of the church. Jesus Christ himself is the head of the church and he has not given up that power, nor will he ever. He has earned the right to be that. He is worthy, the only one in heaven and earth that are worthy to take that position because he was the Lamb of God who shed his innocent blood for those of us that the Father has drawn. But yet in the church system today, you have these pastors that have taken up hold in these churches. Whether they've placed themselves there or whether they've been placed there by the people to be the authority figure. That's antichrist. That's demonic. Christ is the head. 
There is no other. Church, and I mean family of God, the price that Christ paid on Calvary is priceless. It's priceless. Wow. Who's your head today? Who are you under the authority of today? Is it your pastor? You can say no. But then I would ask you, are you going to the pastor for things that you should be going to the head of the church for, Christ? You don't need to go to your pastor for prayer. Your pastor does not have any special ability that you can't go to Christ for and receive. Look at salvation. It is a gift of God. Repentance is a gift of God. And then comes salvation. But look what the church that people go to on Sunday morning, this church institution, has done to salvation. They've made a mockery out of it. They think everybody can have it. It comes at a cheap price. And it's very comfortable and very easy to attain it. Or some actually believe that once you say a prayer, then, then you're saved forever. But we know that's not the case. Because Christ said the branch that does not abide in him and continue with him will be yanked out and burned. Plucked out and burned. Christ is the head. There is no other head. When we put something in between us and Christ, number one, we make a, a mockery of the cross. We make a mockery of the, the blood that he shed. The beating that he took that left him unrecognizable as a human being. We make a mockery of that. Because really what we're saying is, Christ, you, you, you died on the cross and you gave up your life and you shed your blood and you, you, you were beaten to the point where you couldn't even recognize you. The flesh was hanging off your bones. But we don't care because we're going to set this man up here to take your place. Christ is my head and always will be. Is he, what's your, is he your head today? I hope so, for your sake. We need to get back to the basics. We can, John 15 says we can do nothing without Christ. Nothing. You know what God showed me one time? I was going through a hard time. And I was crying out to God and... I was telling God of all the ways that I could fix the current situation I was in. But I always, but I left him out. I mean, I didn't leave him out of my heart, but in my thinking of what I was telling him I was going to do to fix the problem, he wasn't included in that. And he spoke very, very quickly, very sternly, but very compassionate. And he said to me, my child, how can you do all these things without me? You can't even breathe without me. We can't even breathe without him. Christ is the head. That's that's it, plain and simple. Until next time, to the genuinely born again believers, the family of God. God bless.